Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Knowledge 8. We are done with Knowledge 7, which was the history of the Earth. And this is called Animals and Habitats. And just in case you didn't know, what is a habitat? Mm hmm. A habitat. Well, some of you probably do know, and some of you probably think, oh, yeah, I know that word. I've heard of that somewhere. Well, that's what we're going to be paying attention to in this particular lesson, the first lesson. A habitat is a place where an animal or a plant lives. It has food, water, and shelter. So, for instance, if you were a deer, you would be living in the forest. That's your natural habitat. If you were a fish, you would not live in the forest. That is not your natural habitat. <laughs> okay. Another thing you want to know is what a shelter is. A shelter is something that protects you from weather or danger. Um, like you can sit in a car for shelter during a thunderstorm, you know, or you, you run into a lean-to when you're on a hike because you need shelter for the night. And another word to know is a verb. It's uh, to survive. To survive means to stay alive, like humans. We need food and water and friendship to survive. Anyway, uh, what is a habitat? That's what we're going to be looking at right now. So as long as you know those words, survive and shelter, we're going to move right into the lesson. Hold on. And there is a wonderful animal for you to get to uh, uh, meet. Yes, he's a dumpster rat. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Um, so as long as you're familiar with uh, the, the ooky stuff that goes into a... Uh, a dumpster like that? Well, his name is Rattenborough. Now, uh, that's a play some of your uh, parents and folks uh, in, the, in the home might know Richard Attenborough. He was always a person that was giving um, guided tours on television, on PBS, about uh, natural habitats of animals and things. So this is Rattenborough. So your idea at the end is to be able to explain what a habitat is, okay? So, listen carefully and look at the pictures to find out more about why plants and animals live where they do. Okay. Greetings, fellow adventurers. You are here to learn something new, and believe it or not, I am here to teach it to you. I know you may be wondering what you could possibly learn from a rat climbing out of a dumpster, but I am Rattenborough, the famous rat adventurer. I travel the world looking at plants and animals and all the different places they call home. I am going to take you on a special adventure all around the world. You are going to learn about some amazing and incredible places and animals, and we are going to start our exciting journey right here. I know, I know, it doesn't look like much, but it's special to me, and it has everything I need. Hmm. Peculiar little animal, this uh, Rattenborough. <laughs> Ew, yes, this is an alleyway. Welcome to my home. It's the alleyway where I live. Take a look around. What do you see? Mm hmm Yes. There are trash cans, litter, boxes, drains, dripping pipes, old buildings, gutters. It's a perfect home for a rat. It has everything I need to live. All living things need food and water to survive. Now, to survive means to stay alive. Animals like me also need shelter. And a shelter is something that protects from weather or danger, like a house or an apartment can be a shelter, a tree can be a shelter. So, animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. My food comes from these trash cans and the litter on the street. My water comes from the gutters, drains, and pipes. And my family and I have a shelter down under some steps nearby. All of these things make up my habitat. 
A habitat is a place where an animal or a plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. And it's true that my home, the alleyway, is not considered a natural habitat, like a forest or a pond. But with so many humans using up so much of the Earth's natural resources, some animals have been forced to survive in human-made habitats. What are the three things an animal needs to survive? If you said food, water, and shelter, you're right. If a place lacks any of these three things, it is not a good habitat. Animals and plants usually live in habitats that are just right for them. Just as people can't live underwater or in the air, plants and animals can't all live in the same sorts of places. You don't hear about elephants living near the North Pole on all that ice, and yet definitely don't hear about polar bears living in the desert. Pumpkins don't grow in the sea, and fish don't live in trees. This is a, a wise rat. Ooh, drain pipe. I can tell you firsthand that rats can't just live anywhere in the world. I don't like the weather to be too cold, and I need to live in a place where food is easy to find. That's why I like my cozy little shelter here under the steps. It's warm enough for my family and me. There's always plenty of water, and there's always a good supply of food in the trash. Well, let's look around at the park. You might have a park like this somewhere in your neighborhood. People like to spend time playing and relaxing in this park, but it's a habitat for many other things, too. The grass, trees, flowers, and bushes in this park need food and water to live. Have you ever seen a park? What kinds of plants live in the park habitat in your neighborhood? Ooh. Animals. The animals that live in the park share it as a habitat. That includes the pigeons that fly around looking for crumbs to eat, the squirrels, owls, and chipmunks that live in those trees, the bees, fireflies, and mosquitoes buzzing about, the raccoons and possums that come out at night, and even the frogs and fish in the pond nearby. Ooh. Ooh. This is a picture of a place called the Arctic. Do you think you could easily live in the Arctic with its very cold temperatures and snow-covered ground? Not many things can live there, but later I'm going to show you some incredible plants and animals that do live in the Arctic. Now, there's uh, several places where people have made habitats. Most animals have to live in habitats that are specific to them. But you human beings are very clever. You can build habitats for yourselves. If you want to live in the desert where there isn't much water with which to grow food or to drink, you can build a pipeline to bring you water for watering crops or for drinking. You can have food transported to the desert by road or rail because it would be difficult to grow food in the desert and you can build houses for shelter so you don't have to sleep in the sand. In fact, people like you have been able to live in extremely hot, extremely cold and very dry places. We're going on an adventure that will take us all over our amazing planet Earth. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to show you some fascinating animal and plant habitats that might be quite different from yours. You'll see some wonderful and unusual places where things can live. I 
just can't wait to show you all these interesting places. But first, I, I have a lot to pack because we're going all over the world. I'm going to need a backpack full of gear. So hold on to your whiskers, I mean hats, and, and get ready for a marvelous adventure. Yes, indeed. And that, my friends, is the final word for Mr. Rattenborough. Yes, so what is a habitat, right? A habitat is a place where an animal or plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. And uh, what was uh, Rattenborough's habitat? Remember, he lived under steps in an alley. Where did he get food? Yeah, trash cans. Where did he get water? From the drains and the pipes, you know? Would Rattenborough be able to live in his habitat without food, water, and shelter? No. You need food, water, and shelter to survive because he's a living creature. Now, describe your habitat. Where do you find food, water, and shelter in your habitat? Ah, see? Humans are different from other animals. We make a habitat. We can live just about anywhere, which is, you can't do that with many animals. Try taking a Oh, let's just, uh, a cricket. Put a cricket um, in northern Alaska where it's freezing cold. Now, the cricket wouldn't get along because the cricket doesn't have anything to eat. Crickets eat leaves. What if there are no leaves? Well, that's the idea. Um, now, in that read aloud, you heard me say that animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. Now, you know that shelter is something that protects from weather or danger. Like, the two friends looked for shelter when it began to rain. And what other kinds of things could you use as shelter? Think about that for a minute. A lean-to? A tent, maybe? A tarp? A car? A porch? So, um... You know, we've done this in class. Now, if I say something that could be a shelter, I want you to call out, that's a shelter. And if you don't think it could be a shelter, say, that's not a shelter. Okay, I'll give you a couple of seconds after each one for you to respond. A house. A pencil. A school. A cave, a chair. <laughs> now let's go over those, eh? A house? Yep, that's a shelter. A pencil? That's not a shelter. A school? That's a shelter. A cave? That's a shelter. A chair? That's not a shelter, unless you're a cat. But anyway, that is it for this lesson. And we will be back tomorrow um, with a little bit more. You're going to start learning about individual habitats tomorrow. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And Rattenborough will be back tomorrow.